what do people want? Do they want a job or do they want to never have to work again? If what you want is social security and you want to, you want to be able to retire early at age 40 and paint and live with your family and enjoy your life, you don't want cheap pizza and you don't want free streaming YouTube and Netflix. That's patronizing. I don't want to work till I'm 80 and have cheap YouTube. What I want is to work till I'm 40, buy a bond and stop working. And if I'm going to, I have to buy an asset. And so the pernicious issue is that the inflation rate of assets is, it was 8% a year from 2010 to 2020. It was 35% from, from March of 2020 to March of 2021. And if you're working, if you're 21 years old and you've got a job earning cash, you just saw your assets inflate by 25 or 30%. That's, the, that's the, the risk of inflation. So once you understand that, then you realize if you wish to preserve your wealth or to create wealth, the number that matters is the cost of capital, i.e. the asset inflation rate, which is equal to the S&P 500 index return or the, or the M2 money supply, roughly speaking. And if you're not actually able to keep up, uh, stay ahead of that, you're getting poorer. So if you're a laborer, if you have a job and your salary didn't go up by 25% in the last 12 months, you got weaker, you got poorer, right? The, the, you know, the government doesn't want to use 25% as the inflation rate because they don't want to give every federal employee a 25% raise. And so they'll say, well, it's only 1%, there's no inflation yet. But then again, if every house in America on average, according to Case Shiller index went up by 11% this year, how is that 1%? Well, you, you just don't want to buy a house. That's not for you, right? These are not the droids you're looking for. It's patronizing, you know, and, and it just reminds me of this one, this one famous phrase. All of our research shows us we can't tell people what to think, but we can tell them what to think about. And so if I just repeat CPI, CPI, there's no inflation, there's no CPI, CPI is inflation, there's no inflation, CPI, there's no inflation, we're waiting for CPI. If I keep repeating that, you'll agree with me. But meanwhile, you know, the Fed prints a trillion dollars, the stock market spikes and, and people don't say, oh, oh my God, assets have inflated. There's hyperinflation in assets. What they say is, oh, we're brilliant. The stock market's going up. Isn't that great? Well, it's not great for people with cash. By the way, here's the problem. It's not great for any company that's valued based on fiat cash flows, i.e. every value stock. <clears throat> if you have a stock valued based on future cash flows, and if the discount rate is equal to the M2 money supply, and if it goes to 15% a year, you have to, de you have to discount the cash flows 15% a year. And so what you realize is if you're printing money, all of those value stocks can't possibly have, they can't hold value. And so you're destroying the wealth in the equity market over the long term while you're goosing it in the near term. And ultimately, you're going to create this massive stampede to a store of value that is not real estate, that is not bonds, that is not cash, that is not value stocks, that is going to be what? GameStop, super high tech, high flyer, speculative stocks the SPACs, you know, and then, and then that drives people out of the system. And so you have to then look at either gold or Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, the answer is Bitcoin, not gold. And uh, if you bought gold, you got destroyed. But if you bought Bitcoin, you did well. And uh, all of that's being driven by monetary policy. But I think if you ask me that question now, today, thinking from first principles, I have to say the Federal Reserve and the EU Central Bank have tripled the cost of capital. And what and that's made your investment decision much easier. What they've done is they put 95% of every company underwater. Most companies can't grow their cash flows 25% a year. It's, it's literally impossible to do without taking on insane risk. And so you're, you know, why is Tesla working? Because people are looking for hyper growth that they think is not going to be, that's going to grow more than 25%. It's going to change the world. And if I don't like that, I go buy GameStop, you know, and, and 
And uh, otherwise, what are you gonna buy, big tech? You can buy big tech, but they're all tech monopolies. Will, will Facebook, Apple, Amazon, and Google gonna be able to, can they raise their prices 25% a year for every year for the next eight years without regulators doing something about that? Maybe, that's your bet. Otherwise, you know, Angela, I guess the real issue is I would say the fundamental most important question every investor has today is you take a spreadsheet and you, and you write the years 2021, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 on it. And then you put in the percentage increase in the money supply that you expect the Fed or the EU central bank to print and really just the Fed. And if you put in a number zero, 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 you're an optimist, right? And then, wow. then you've got a thousand complicated choices. But if you put in a number of 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, you know, you can't buy bonds, you can't buy real estate, you can't buy 95% of the stocks. And if you put in a number 20, 20, 20, if you think that the currency is going to weaken by 20%, all you can do is buy scarce assets, trophy assets, scarce art, Bitcoin, something which is not correlated to fiat cash flows because everything else has been debased to the point that that a million pages of information and strategy are all irrelevant. The models are all irrelevant. Everything you've learned in 30 years is all irrelevant. Be best example, you know, what are you gonna buy in Venezuela or Zimbabwe if the currency collapses, it's gonna work? And the answer is nothing, nothing. If you're in Argentina and the peso slides from three pesos to the dollar to 150 pesos to the dollar, which is what happened in the last 10 years, there is no investment strategy, no money manager in Argentina, no portfolio of stocks, bonds, equity, derivatives, real estate, nothing which is going to work other than this one thing. You convert your pesos into dollars. You convert, you forward finance all your cash flows. You finance all your fixed assets. You issue as much equity as you can in pesos. You issue as much debt unsecured in pesos. Convert it all to dollars, put it into a bank outside the control of the Argentine government so that they can't convert it back into pesos and debase it. And that's the only strategy. And what I've just described in a nutshell is the strategy of buying Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's a bank in cyberspace. It's a hard asset. I, I take my money, I convert it to Bitcoin. I put it in a bank in cyberspace. And then I'm indifferent to how much currency gets printed by the Federal Reserve. Will Taproot make the Bitcoin blockchain fast and scalable? Um, we'll see. I, I think that uh, over time, Taproot will make the Bitcoin blockchain better. Could um, it compromise I, you know, my, I fall into the I fall in the category of people that thinks the Bitcoin network is already good enough to hold a hundred trillion dollars worth of monetary energy, and we should make it better carefully and in a responsible fashion and prudently. And yeah, it should upgrade, but it doesn't need to go fast, and it does, and it's not needful of anything uh, to be successful. So I, I wouldn't rush it, but I wouldn't stop it either. I would just be very careful in moving forward. Uh, and I guess related to that question, does the taproot compromise the security of the Bitcoin network? I, I don't think it's going to compromise the security of the network. I think that that uh, the upgrades in Taproot will make the network better if properly implemented.